Okay, hello. Hi, my name is Dr. Melantic Liu. Um, I'm the chief of breast imaging here at Edison Radiology Group. Um, I've been here uh, a long time, over 20 years. Um, and um, I think our breast center here at JFK is like a, a little family here. And um, I think we provide great service. Um, but thank you for inviting me today for the Women's Wellness um, Lunch Series. Um, it's a great honor. And uh, we'll discuss, um, especially this month is October, so it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So I think it's important that um, people understand and are more aware of um, getting their annual screening mammograms. Um, and today's talk is uh, basically like where you get your mammogram matters, which is uh, very important. So we'll just go over um, just some breast cancer statistics um, in uh, 2022. So breast cancer, it's the most common cancer diagnosed in women. So 12.8% of the women will be diagnosed with breast cancer during their lifetime. There are like more than 287,000 cases um, anticipated for this year. And the estimated um, breast cancer deaths in 2022 is estimated to be 43,250 in this country alone. So I'll just give you just a little introduction to our breast center here at HMH uh, JFK um, here at uh, 60 uh, James Street in Edison, New Jersey. Um, we're a separate um, imaging center building um, across the street from the hospital. Um, which makes it really convenient because it's kind of like one-stop shopping. So um, it's convenient in that it's across the street from the hospital, so it's separate from the hospital, so you don't have to deal with the uh, hospital, um, a little bit of the uh, busyness and the confusion sometimes on the parking, um, where it's really easy here. Um, so when you're coming down James Street and at the traffic light, um, instead of going to the hospital direction, um, it's on 60 James, which is across the street. It has its own um, parking facility, which makes it like super easy. And all the patients really love that it's like an easy in and out instead of um, trying to maneuver and trying to find yourself somewhere in the hospital. So all the imaging is done. And um, here at the 60 James Street, uh, because we have uh, our breast center here and also um, the MRI building is here and um, kind of like all the modalities for breast imaging with um, mammography, ultrasound, stereotactic core biopsies, and MRI, and bone density um, are all located here in this um, separate facility, just a really easy access um, across the street from the hospital. So this is just the entrance. So when you come through the entrance, um, they pretty much have like a pretty light filled uh, uh, main uh, uh, registration room and waiting room. Um, so this is kind of like the general area where all the patients come in once they enter here at 60 James Street, um, where um, the MRI is on the right side of the building and then the breast center is located on the left at the registration desk. Um, so when we make a left, we're gonna be entering into the breast center. So entering into the breast center, um, it has its own separate waiting room um, for women pretty much mostly only uh, and here it's um, pretty spacious, um, kind of like to spread the patients apart. Um, but this is kind of where the first area where the patients come and enter, and then they come to uh, after registration, and then they wait here to get their mammogram, and the technologist comes pick them up here in the uh, breast center waiting room. So we have um, three uh, 3D mammography. Um, units here at JFK, um, we're fortunate to have. Um, two of them have upright um, stereotactic 5C capability. Um, so this is a picture of Adriana. Um, she's one of our senior technologists. She's amazing. She does, um, she's just showing us one of the units here. Um, and then that pink uh, pad, you'll see there, it's right on top of the, um, the mammal plate. So the, when a patient comes in and they get their mammogram done, um, we offer this mammal pad, which is um, a great uh, convenience and really lucky to have for the patients. Instead of feeling like a cold plate there, they're able to be able to give a mammal pad for every patient. Um, and then this is just a typical mammography unit um, that does 3D. So 
So what is a mammal pad? Um, it's a breast cushion and it's designed for women and it was designed by a female breast surgeon. It's FDA cleared. It does not impair image quality. So the images are great even without the mammal pad. And it just helps the patients relax during their mammogram so they don't feel, it's like an extra cushion when you have your mammogram. And we're fortunate in that we're able to provide this mammal pad for every patient that comes to JFK. So again, there's like no cold, hard plate against the breast. Um, it's just uh, gives an extra comfort for the patient. So they are more relaxed and probably be able to get, give a, a better picture for their mammogram because they're more relaxed um, and not feeling that cold, hard plate. So again, it's warm and it makes mammography a little bit more comfortable experience than without the mammal pad. And we're able to have really great images um, because the patient is more relaxed and uh, it's not as um, uncomfortable as without the mammal pad. So this is just a video of um, Adriana. She's just showing what we do for every patient. We put a new mammal pad um, before each mammogram. So this is just the, again, the mammography machine showing that the mammal pad is placed there um, for the patient before their mammography is done. So we do 3D tomosynthesis for every patient, um, which is like amazing. So this video just shows how we have one millimeter slices on how tomosynthesis is performed. And then all the images are kind of compiled together. So it's kind of like pages in a book and we like scan through the breast, looking through the depth of the tissue for any lesions, um, architectural distortion or masses or speculation, um, which are like signs of breast cancer. So why should we start screening at 40 years old? So breast cancer is a problem for women in their 40s. One in six breast cancers are found in women in ages 40 to 49. The 10 year risk for being diagnosed with breast cancer in a 40 year old woman is one in 69. Uh, more than 70% of women dying from breast cancer in their 40s belong to the 20% not being screened. So the biggest risk factor for any woman is age. As we age, our breast cancer risk increases. So uh, you know, as we get older, um, we have more risk for developing breast cancer. So this is um, an image and it shows um, how mammography has markedly improved over the many decades. Um, the first image on the left um, is really a poor quality mammogram that was done like uh, decades ago where we barely can see the skin, we can barely see, we just see the very white um, dense breast tissue but nothing much underneath it. Um, subsequently after that, the blue image is um, what we call zero mammography, which um, doesn't have, we don't do anymore, but um, it was just uh, somewhat uh, maybe of a slight improvement over that first initial left image. Um, and then over the last um, 20 years, the third image it got a little better where we're seeing a little bit underneath the breast tissue more. And then this last image on the right is kind of what our high quality mammogram shows now where we actually see the skin, we see nipple detail, um, we see the dense tissue with the stromal layers. Um, so it's a marked improvement over the last decade that mammography has markedly improved and um, helps us catch especially um, small breast cancers that are hiding underneath that dense breast tissue. So this is just a chart, it just shows how women um, in the ages from 40 to 84, from 1969 to 2015, um, it's the age adjusted US uh, breast cancer mortality rate. It just shows that how the graph from 1969 to 1989, where mammography screening really took off, um, and then uh, many patients started um, doing their annual screening and how the mortality decreased 42% uh, from the year 1989 to 2019 now, and that there are 384, uh, 100,000 to 614,000 lives saved. So yes, the mammography has reduced breast cancer deaths. So 
So the benefits of screening um, is that there's a, at least a 40% drop in breast cancer deaths if you do your annual screening. There's less extensive surgery for screening detected cancers if you do your annual mammography screening. There's less chemotherapy for screening detected cancers because you're finding the cancers that are smaller by doing annual screening in general. So mammographic screening is able to detect a large amount of breast cancers before they can be felt. And when they are at a smaller size an earlier stage and more likely to be curable, which is the goal of uh, screening mammography. And again, the chemotherapy is much more effective for screening detected breast cancers. So beginning screening mammography at the age of 40 years old does save the most lives. So starting your yearly mammogram at age 40 has cut the breast cancer deaths by 40%. Yearly screening starting at age 40 versus every other year between the ages of 50 to 74 saves approximately 13,770 more lives each year. So the goal of screening is to find the cancer as early as possible to save as many lives as possible. So this is just an image. Um, when you get your uh, mammogram reports, it'll tell you about your different breast densities. So this is just a picture showing the variation of like the four categories of breast density um, that women uh, we categorize as. So the first left image um, is a fatty breast. And um, you can see how it's more darker. And um, if there are like lesions there, like white, usually breast cancers show up as like a white mass um, on the mammogram. It's more easily seen on the mammography where the second image is what we call scattered fibroglandular densities. And um, you see a little bit more of that um, white stromal tissue. Um, and then um, the third image is what we call heterogeneously dense. Um, breast parenchyma. So it makes it a little bit more challenging um, to find the lesions underneath that white denser tissue. And then the last image there is um, kind of more of a white um, mammogram where um, this is what we call extremely dense breast parenchyma. And sometimes the underneath this dense tissue, it makes it sometimes a little harder to find lesions, but Thank goodness with 3D mammography, we're able to page through the breast and um, still see it better than without the 3D. So this is just a picture showing the four different variation of breast density that women have. So you're basically, most people are born with whatever density they are. Um, most people over time um, might have dense breasts and then develop fattier breasts, especially after um, having kids, um, your breasts become fatty, or some people actually, there's a small percentage of the population that always have extremely dense breast parenchyma, like that image on the right. And even um, no matter what, throughout their lifetime, they have very dense breasts. So one of the adjunct um, tests that we do here at the Breast Center is, um, we, this is a typical breast ultrasound room. So we do the screening mammography and then some patients, especially with the dense breasts, um, they have like a, a breast ultrasound done to look under the dense tissue. So here is just um, Jody, one of our um, ultrasound technologists and she'll one of our machines. We actually are fortunate to have three um, breast ultrasound machines here at the breast center. Um, and then this is just the, um, the stretcher bed with the sheet on where the patient would lie on. And then um, our technologist would do the ultrasound um, uh, with the patient lying on the, the stretcher bed there. So risks of mammography. Um, some of the risks of mammography is that um, some patients get recalled and then some eventually might go to biopsy. So when we have do screening mammography, um, usually one out of, out of the every 100 women who will get a screening mammogram, 90 of them will be told that their mammogram will be normal. There will be a small percentage of patients, approximately um, 10 to 12 percent um, per year, um, where they need to are recalled and they need to come back for additional imaging, which is like spot compression views or magnification views, or they might need a breast ultrasound in order um, to evaluate an abnormality. 
Um, six will be reassured out of that 100 that their mammograms are normal. Two might be asked to return in six months for a, a six month follow up exam for something that's probably benign. Uh, and two will be recommended um, to probably might have uh, a needle biopsy. Um, so recall is not that common among um, the screening mammogram patients. Usually it's only like 10 to 12% per year. And biopsy is uh, rare. It's only one to 2% of the patients per year. So the harms of screening are negligible compared to dying from breast cancer. So actually I'm gonna go over a few cases. Um, these actually were just over the past week. Um, this helps you see what we look for uh, when you come in for a screening mammogram. These are all abnormal patients. So um, this image here on the left is a typical, what we call like a cranial cauda view. So it's one of the four views that we perform uh, when a patient has a screening mammogram. Um, here in the back part of the tissue, you see this ovoid, what we call like a spiculated mass where there's like little striations from the mass um, extending from the posterior tissue. Um, the image to the right is uh, what we call an MLO image, which is the other corresponding view we do um, for each breast. So typically on a screening mammogram, we'll do a, what we call a cranial caudad view, which is this image on the left and also an MLO view. Um, so we do two views of the breast um, for screening mammogram. So here the abnormality is there is a, like approximately a two centimeter mass on the posterior tissue. Um, and then this one actually turned out to be like an invasive ductal cancer. So we characterize the image by bringing the patient to ultrasound. So this is a um, image of the ultrasound of that same patient um, where we can see that the mass is solid. Um, the blue and red on the image is what we call color Doppler flow. So we see that there is some uh, flow with that little blue dot on top of the mass there. Um, the mass looks irregular um, and has posterior acoustical shadowing. So this is very typical of what we call invasive uh, ductal breast cancer. Okay. Um, and then this is another image of another patient. So this also patient came in this past week. Um, the left image again is, uh, we usually get, again, we get two views. Um, this is the cranial caudad view on the left. The right is the medial lateral oblique view. Um, so we always get, again, the two views of the breast. And um, in here, you'll see that there is an abnormality. We have to do, have her bring, come back for extra views. So here um, in the middle of the image, um, it's maybe a little bit hard to detect, but um, you see all those little white dots in the middle. Um, these are what we call microcalcifications. So these microcalcifications um, are branching, uh, pleomorphic, and they kind of extend about two centimeters. So this is the first image on the left is the cranial caudad view. The image on the right is the, um, what we call like a 90 degree lateral medial magnification views. And this just shows those little calcifications. So this is kind of what we look for in mammography to look for signs of breast cancer. And this turn, these like little calcifications since they're pleomorphic and branching are very highly suspicious for a breast cancer. So the patient underwent what we call a stereotactic core biopsy. This is our stereotactic prone table here at the breast center. We also have um, upright capability, but um, this patient had, we put her on the prone table. So this table is our biopsy table. And um, usually the patient lies on top of the table and there's a hole in the middle of the table and the patient's breast hangs through the hole. Um, so we take an image of the little calcifications that you saw on that last mammogram and then we give a local anesthetic and then um, put a needle in, take a small amount of tissue to get those little white dots of calcifications um, to send, um, for, we did for a biopsy and send it to pathology. So this is um, an image on the left, is the sample we took of those little micro calcifications. Um, this is an X-ray of the specimen that was obtained after the biopsy. So within the specimen, there's these tiny little white dots of calcifications. Um, and then we know we had a good sample because we see these little dots of calcifications. And then we send this off to pathology to get a diagnosis. Um, after the biopsy, we usually put a little micromark clip in 
um, just to show the area that was biopsied and it corresponds to the area on the mammogram. So that's that right image where you see that little, um, um, it's like a square dot with like um, a little hook on top. Um, it's uh, That's the biopsy clip. And then the black inside it is the, um, the air inside the cavity that was biopsied. So we know we had a good sample from that specimen there on the left and that um, it corresponds to what we wanted biopsied on the post uh, biopsy mammogram image. And then that, that last case turned out to be a, a breast cancer. Um, so that was um, being sent to surgery. So this is a third patient that I had this past week. Um, this one is a uh, 90 degree um, lateral medial view. Um, of the right breast. Um, and then this is a typical screening mammogram picture where at the top of the picture, um, it's kind of hard to detect, but um, we were able to see it. There's like small little white dots of calcification. So usually for mammograms to look for signs of breast cancer, we're usually looking for these little calcifications or masses or speculation or architectural distortion. So here on this image, there's a tiny, tiny, like two, three millimeter cluster of those little calcifications right at the top right edge of the image, if you can see it. So we did a corresponding magnification views. So within that circle, you see those tiny, tiny little white dots of calcifications that made like a small cluster of calcifications. So that was suspicious for us to send for a biopsy. So this one is, we did this on the um, upright uh, machine uh, because it was kind of a far back location. So um, that little white dots of calcifications um, on the top part of the image, um, the long white line is our needle that we usually use um, for a biopsy. So we see that the needle is directed right to those little white dots of calcifications at the top edge of the image. So the second image shows that we advanced the needle to the area of the calcifications. So just at the tip of the needle, there are those little white dots of calcifications that we sampled for biopsy. So we take a specimen image um, just to make sure that we were able to obtain the calcifications for biopsy. Um, here on the uh, sample of the specimen, we see tiny little white dots of the calcifications. So we were able to successfully um, biopsy those small calcifications and send it to pathology um, for further evaluation. This actually turned out to be a small um, ductal carcinoma in situ, which is a stage zero small breast cancer um, that's in the breast. Um, and I think this one is our final case from this past week. So um, here is um, our typical mammogram picture. Um, where we have uh, two CC views of the breast at the top left um, part of the image. Um, on the bottom left image is the corresponding medial lateral oblique views. Um, so at the edge of the top of the CC image, there's a small little mass that's seen there. So these are what we look for. We're trying to find small masses and calcifications, distortions, speculation, in order to find small signs of breast cancer. So there at the top edge of the image, um, we did an ultrasound to find it on ultrasound because it's always easier to do the biopsy under ultrasound um, instead of mammography if you have a choice just because it's quicker and we can do it real time. Here on the ultrasound, we see a small hypochoic mass. The blue dots on the image here on the right show that there is increased color flow. The edges of the mass are a little bit irregular. So actually this was a really small infiltrating ductal breast cancer um, that was found um, just from her screening mammogram. So another um, test that we do here at the Breast Center to provide for our patients, so it's kind of like one-stop shopping, is this is our bone density machine where um, patients usually get them, you know, after 50 years old, um, typically every other year, but um, the patient usually lies down um, on this table and then we're able to get um, bone density images and figure out their bone density calculations um, from here. So you can, we do them, some patients have their screening mammogram and their bone density done at the same time. 
um, in order to get both tests done on the same day. So here's my wonderful uh, JFK nurse navigator team. Uh, this is uh, Karen and this is Teresa, who we love. Um, they're excellent. Um, they're able to provide great service to provide, provide uh, patient continuity of care. So when the patient um, starts off with a screening mammogram and there's an abnormality found, um, usually my nurse navigator team um, follows them up, um, make sure they're ready for biopsy, follows them up post biopsy, make sure that um, patients are coordinated, um, getting their appropriate care if needed. Um, if, if everything's benign, then um, we usually just uh, have them come back for a six month follow up, post biopsy follow up. Um, but if there are um, like breast cancer that's found, um, usually our nurse navigator team tracks them, make sure they're set up with the appropriate people if it's a surgeon or oncologist. Um, so my nurse navigator team is invaluable and I'm so glad that they're here with us. And this is Dolores Koch. She's our breast center manager. Um, and then she's amazing. Make sure that um, our breast center is run efficiently um, and that uh, patients' concerns are taken care of and that um, we're kind of like one um, family here at the breast center, especially um, I feel connected with all of them because um, I've been here 20 years and many of them have been there even longer than me for over 20 years. So I think we have a great team here at the JFK breast center. So just in summary, um, screening mammography is a proven lifesaver. There's a 40% reduction in breast cancer deaths with regular screening mammograms. And again, as I said, the most lives are saved with annual screening at the age of 40 years old. So it does matter, I think, where you get your mammogram. Um, our Breast Center here is ACR um, accredited for Breast Imaging Center of Excellence. So it's one thing that you should probably um, always uh, try to uh, look for in a breast center, as especially when you're ACR Breast Imaging Center of Excellence, um, you have to go through a lot of um, uh, qualifications for um, that has to get renewed every few years to make sure that you're on top of everything. And um, especially being in a comprehensive breast center, we're able to provide all the modalities here at one site um, where we have 3D mammography for all our patients, um, breast ultrasound um, also um, with easy access and breast MRI with breast MRI biopsy capability is also here in the same building. And that's just what I said with stereo, ultrasound, MR, all in one site. And also we have a very dedicated breast center staff and we have board certified physicians on site. Um, one people, one uh, note that some people might not consider is that they get their mammography done at a site, but there are no um, radiologists um, or physicians supervising the site and the um, mammogram or images from whatever study are performed are sent to a, a separate um, site, you know, where there is a board certified physician um, but our, our staff is, and board certified physicians are on site. So where you have your mammogram matters. Um, this is our, just our breast center, um, which I think it's great. Um, Dolores there on the top, um, Christy Palmasano, she's our um, biopsy coordinator. So um, when there is an abnormality that is seen and needs a biopsy, she follows them also throughout the process. Um, and um, again, our nurse navigators who are invaluable. So this is just a video. Um, it shows uh, Cheryl Crow when she was diagnosed with breast cancer, her experience. So I thought it was just interesting. Um, this is from Good Morning America when she did this in August of 2020. One second, everyone. We're just having a little technical difficulty. We'll be right back. Right now, and we're all living through this uncertain time. It's really important for women over the age of 40 to continue to be diligent about getting your mammogram. 
because early detection really does, it does matter. And we can't take care of our loved ones if we don't take care of our own health. So in 2006, I was diagnosed with stage one breast cancer. I went into my routine mammogram, which obviously I was dreading like everyone does. And um, I was extremely athletic, good eater, you know, very healthy, no family history. So I wasn't worried about it. And I came out with a stage one diagnosis. After having uh, the radiologist say, come back in six months, we see something suspect. I didn't wait six months because was recommended that I didn't and I think because of that uh, I had a lumpectomy and radiation as opposed to having perhaps a more you know a harsher treatment. I find that every year um, throughout the years I am talking about early detection because we still don't have a cure for breast cancer and until the time that we do our best weapon is early detection. We were all very recommended at the very beginning of this pandemic to put sort of our less crucial visits to the doctor on hold, but it really is important that we continue to observe this annual routine of getting a mammogram after the age of 40. It can really make the difference between having a, a, a very mild treatment or having something much more taxing. I think women in general already are very astute at taking care of everyone before we take care of ourselves. And that is the lesson in this pandemic as well. We're all uh, making sure that our kids are staying healthy. We're all wearing masks, we're socially distanced. My kids are going back to school. I'm following all the regulations and making sure that they know all the guidelines. And yet it is still important that come November when I schedule my mammogram that I keep that appointment because life is going on. It is continuing to go on breast cancer will continue to exist even during a pandemic. Although I just wanted to thank everyone um, for joining today for this webinar. Hopefully everyone got um, some insights um, on how important it is uh, for doing your annual screening mammography because um, mammography does save lives. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Melanthic Lou. <clears throat> uh, I want to thank everyone for joining and uh, just uh, let you know that we will be sending out a recording of this um, uh, a presentation probably within a week or so. Um, and our, if there are any questions, please do use uh, the, the chat, not the chat, I'm sorry, the, the Q&A bubbles below. Um, I also want to just uh, throw out a question myself, uh, as both Shella Crow and, and Dr. Melantic Lou mentioned that the annual uh, visit uh, is, is very important. I, I heard a story recently of one of our patients uh, that just for whatever inconvenience or, or reasons didn't, didn't do one uh, an annual exam and skip the year and the next year it was found uh, that you did have breast cancer. So um, just want to reiterate that. Is there anything about that particular situation or to, to speak about it more, uh, Dr. Melanthic Lou? Yes, well, just in my personal experience, because of the pandemic, um, some people have um, um, kind of delayed their screening mammography. Um, and unfortunately, over the last um, several months, you know, especially I've been seeing um, larger breast cancers than usual. So that totally affects um, um, people's outcome and um, treatment. And um, uh, so that's why it's just really important to keep up with your annual mammography every year, because if, it's that, if breast cancer is really common and um, if it hopefully it never develops but in you, but if it does, you find it small. And um, especially now with um, when they do treatments um, for chemotherapy or for estrogen progesterone positive, if you're HER2 new status, the chemotherapy is much more targeted than it was, um, you know, many years ago where they kind of just did blanketed chemotherapy. Where now um, finding breast cancers, you know, really does save lives. And um, uh, it's, it's just really important to do your annual mammography because if, if it ever develops in, um, in you, then hopefully it's just found small and, um, and it's probably curable.